example, if we have these two diodes, D1 and D2, um, and we use the ideal um, model to try and estimate which ones and which ones are off, so we could make a truth table D1 and D2. The possibilities are uh, we could have D1 on and D2 off, or we could have uh, them both on, or we could have them both off, or we could have uh, D1 off and D2 on. So uh, we, we just have to pick some and try them. And, and sometimes we've got some, um, um, looking at the circuit, we might have some, some inkling, some, knowledge of, of what might work and what might not work. And, and this is probably not true. Um, it just seems unlikely that they would all be off. Um, and so if we eliminate that choice, we still have three more choices. Um, so we could guess that D1 is off and D2 is on. So D1 is off and D2 is on. We'll, we'll guess that one first. Be our first guess, and and with that, we could uh, redraw uh, the circuit. And um, so, if D one is off, we can replace it with an open. That's where D one is, and then we still have a resistor five k going down to minus ten. And then we have, uh, using the ideal model, we'd replace D2 with a short. Which means that uh, uh, this voltage here, V2 is actually the same as V1. And we've got, let's see, plus 10 volts up here and uh, um, 10K. So, uh, D2. So we'll go back to black. That, that would be the circuit we have to solve in this case. There's an E and there's an there. Um, <clears throat> well, we could, th this might be confusing to you, um, but we could redraw it. Minus 10, plus 10, just straighten it out. And V1 equals V2. That's, that's the circuit we have now. And, and maybe this looks easier to solve. Um, and there, there's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, I would say it's a simple divider, or one way to do it is just a simple divider. That may not be the easiest for you, but uh, it, it, should, it shows something important if we do it, if we just use the divider, divider, we've got five. So V2, V1 equals uh, V2 is equal to the divider. It's um, 5K over 5K plus 10K times the difference between these two. So that's uh, 10 minus and minus 10. But when we do that divider, that's, that, that's the divided voltage there, but we have to add back in that minus 10. So we actually have 5,000 over 15,000 times 20 plus or minus uh, 10. And that is equal to um, 20 over three. Uh, minus 10. Which is equal to 6.67 minus 10 or minus 3.33 volts. That's what we would get um, by this assumption. By our first guess, we would get um, minus 3.33 volts. But we have to check that in the circuit. Does that make sense? So uh, with minus 3.3 volts right at this node there, let me change color. So 
we've got minus 3.33 volts right here. That's, that's the result of, of that guess. Does that make sense? Well, if we think about the original circuit, if we had minus 3.33 volts here, uh, that sounds reasonable because we've got plus 10 here and minus 3.3 here. And we've got a uh, higher voltage here than here. So that checks out, that sounds fine. But in this case, we've got zero and minus 3.33 volts right there. And, and that um, makes no sense because uh, that says we've got um, a higher voltage up here than here, right? We've got zero up here and minus 3.3 um, down there, down, uh, down here. And we've got a higher voltage on this side than this side. That means this diode actually should be on. And uh, this case is impossible, or this uh, solution is impossible. careful not to erase the important stuff. So that, is, that solution is impossible. And you could, um, you could say, oops. you could say that this is impossible. And, and, and I wouldn't uh, make it so, so, you know, don't erase it, keep, keep this information, but you could, for instance, especially since I'm using an iPad, I could just uh, cross it off and say that, that solution is impossible. So we got to pick another one. Um, <clears throat> because D1 needed to be on for this negative voltage there, we would have to have D1 on there. So we'll pick another one. We'll try um, D1 and D2 on. So guess two. Uh, with them both on, we could redraw the circuit. Uh, now we've got ground going to minus 10 through uh, 5K. And we've got plus 10. Um, going through a 10K and we've got uh, V1 is equal to V2. We've got diode one there and diode two there. So we put those in V1, D2. And um, if, uh, if they're both on, then that means V out is, is equal to zero, right? Because we've got a connection all the way back from ground at zero volts active all those places, right? Um, so we, we clearly have zero volts. We, we have to, that, that's getting forced by the location of that ground. Does this make sense? Well, um, with the ideal diode model, um, we, we have a place here at ground where um, we could have zero volts and zero current and, and it, it works for either model. So it's, it's okay, we can, we can do that. Let's, let's uh, keep going and, and see. Um, <clears throat> about uh, uh, KCL and, and make sure that the current flows are, are right. So we could call this, we could call um, this I1, call this I2, and we could call this uh, I5K. And KCL at this node would be um, I1 plus I2, is equal to I5K. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and we should have a positive current for both of those. Well, uh, I, I1 is maybe, we, we, we don't have any basis to figure out any, any, so 
zero current or any positive current would be okay for, for I1, but we don't have any basis to figure that out. We, we, can't, we can't just figure out what this current is because it's a short circuit is the model, but we can figure out this current and this current because we've got a known resistance in each of those cases. So uh, first let's find um, I, um, I2, that would be 10 minus zero over uh, 10K. So that's one milliamps. And then find uh, I5K. And that would be zero uh, minus, um, minus 10. That's the drop from, from there. And that's over 5K. And that equals two milliamps. And so with that, by KCL, um, then we can find I1. So KCL tells us that I1 is equal to I five K minus I2. And what we need to know is that both I1 and I2, they both need to be zero or greater. They both need to be a positive voltage. So um, I five K was one milliamp. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, sorry, I, I 5K is two milliamps. So let's see how we're gonna have a problem here. So we've got five, uh, uh, two milliamps minus um, I2 is one milliamp, which is equal to uh, one milliamp. And so it checks. Um, D1 and D2 are on. We, we checked it out and we, we got this guess was, was right. Without having to try the other two, um, <coughs> excuse me, we know it's, it's consistent and it works. Um, now we could uh, go ahead and, um, and try this, this same circuit with the, um, the constant drop model. Um, and so uh, with the constant drop model, and, and I'm not saying that you should uh, solve this by always first doing the ideal model and the constant drop, but I'll just show how um, I, would, I would draw this with the constant drop model. And, um, so with the constant drop model, we, we've got that circuit. Um, but um, with the on is equal to 0 0.7 volts, which is that value. So if I redraw the circuit, I need to replace diode one with a battery, which has 0 0.7 volts on it. And I need to replace um, diode two <coughs> with a battery in the same direction because they're both on with 0 0.7 volts on it. And we still have those resistors and things. So we've got uh, 0 0.7 volts here and 0 0.7 volts here. We've got uh, 10K and 10 volts and minus 10 volts and 5K. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh oh, and now we have V2 is up here and V1 is down here. So V1 and V2 are no longer the same, but you can see once you know one of the others, it's easy to find them. So um, we've got uh, V1 has to be um, 0 0.7 volts below uh, ground, right? Because no ground here, we've got zero here and we fall down to, 0 0.7 volts below that. So we have 0 0.7 volts negative for uh, V1. Oops. Okay, it's eraser. Okay, well, V2 is actually 0 0.7 volts above that, right? So uh, V2 is actually uh, minus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 which is equal to zero volts, we have ground at, at V2. And, and so we, we know both those um, um, voltages 
and we could find the currents. So the current in the 10K is equal to 10 minus zero over uh, 10K. So that's one milliamp again. And, and that's the same as the currents. This is, uh, I should point out that this is D2 and that's D1. And there is a, a, a current through here, ID2. And there's a current through here, ID1. Those batteries don't generate the current. Um, they're, they're, but they're the current that's just flowing through them. So we got the I10K and now we can find I5K. <clears throat> we still can't easily find the current in this uh, diode. Um, we need other information to, to check that current. But where we have resistors, we can find it. So I5K is equal to minus 0 0.7 minus minus 10 over 5,000. And that's uh, 9.3 volts over, over uh, 5,000 or um, 1.86 milliamps. Okay, and KCL will then again check. So I5K minus um, uh, ID2 or I in 10K would be 1.86 milliamps minus one milliamp, which is equal to 0 0.86. And so both on, um, checks, in fact, even in this case. Both of these diodes are on um, with the, these um, resistances and, and voltage values arranged as they are. Now be careful, if this was a larger drop on this side than that, um, that would change these voltages. If we have a larger drop here, this voltage on, on V1 will be higher and that could change everything. So uh, this solution only works for, uh, for these solutions only work for these cases where we've got uh, these ratios resistance and these voltages up here. Um, if the circuit's different, you really need to go through and figure it out. But you may be able to guess um, some things and make a, um, a educated good starting.